good evening, my Friar teammates. This is Bob Driscoll, your proud athletic director here in Friartown. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 60th anniversary of our All Sports Gala, which is truly amazing. I was reflecting on the fact that this is my 20th All Sports Gala. And as I tell my son, Sean, who's a Providence College graduate, you know, I'm, I'm a middle-aged man. And he said, no, Dad, middle age is 38. He said, you're 68, you're an old man. But I don't feel old because I'm around young, great people like yourself. Uh, first of all, I want to take this opportunity to tell all of you how much I admire and respect your mental tough, toughness and grit. Um, the fact that we were able to compete this year tells me everything about you as young men and young women. You've lived arguably through the most difficult time really in modern history and have come out the other side even better and stronger. And I'm not sure there's many things you're going to face in your life that is as difficult as this. And for that, I want to tell you how much I'm, how much I'm really proud of you. And, um, you know, we talked a lot about having a growth mindset and, and getting better during this pandemic. And you actually did this. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Uh, I also want to thank our graduating seniors. When I think about what you've gone through the past two years, it's unprecedented, and your leadership has allowed us to compete, and you were a great example for our young people. So thank you for just being great leaders here uh, in Friar Town. I also want to thank and appreciate my great sports medicine staff led by John, uh, my good friend, John Rock, and certainly Jill Appoint and Steve Napolillo on the Continuity Task Force. I mean, the amount of work that these people put into making sure that you were safe and that you were healthy and had the opportunity to compete is really, really special. So thank you for the bottom of my heart as well from that. And I wanted to take this opportunity to um, kind of kick off tonight with my favorite quote. I think it's uh, appropriate given what we went through and it's by Theodore Roosevelt. It's called In the Arena, and it goes like this. It's not the critic who counts, not the man or woman who points out how the strong have stumbled, but where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man or woman who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there's no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends themselves in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he or she fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his or her place shall never be with those cold, and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. And I can tell you that you are not uh, timid souls. What you've done this year is truly amazing. And I'm just thrilled that we're here tonight to celebrate this special event. And we're not going to let this pandemic dampen our spirits. So uh, thank you again for everything you've done to make Friartown great. You know, at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce my great teammate, the president of Providence College, Father Ken Sicard. Father Sicard and I have been teammates for over 20 years now, and he really understands the value that big time college athletics brings to a school like Providence College and the core values that you learn from being a competitor. And I know he has some great words that he wants to share with you tonight. So Father Sicard, the floor is yours. Good evening, everybody. I'm Father Ken Sicard. I am just finishing up my first year as president of Providence College, and I'm so happy to welcome all of you to our 60th annual sports gala. And I know like all of you, I wish that we could be together in person because there's nothing like the energy in that room when we're all together. And I also recognize what a trying year it's been for many of us, but at Friartown, we are well equipped 
to deal with the challenges that we face at any time. Our student athletes, our coaches, our staff, they've shown amazing resilience in these challenging times during this year of COVID. And I, for one, am so impressed by your perseverance and your grit. And I know it wasn't always easy. Like I can't imagine it's easy being in a competition without the noise and the enthusiasm of a rowdy crowd of fans. And yet you continued to give it your all. And that's really impressive. And I'm also impressed by the way you've looked out for each other, especially during this past year. And I know for our student athletes, you, you've learned a lot about yourselves. You've learned a lot of valuable life lessons mostly how important it is to be there and support each other and to be grateful for all the good things that you have. And coincidentally, our commencement speaker this year is Dr. Laurie Santos. And Laurie is a psychology teacher at Yale. And Laurie does a podcast called The Happiness Lab. And it's a podcast where she explores what really brings happiness to people, what really makes them happy in life. Father Shanley got me hooked on these podcasts. And in one of her early talks, she pointed out that two of the things that bring people the most lasting happiness in life are kindness and gratitude, values that we certainly hold dear at PC and that I know you hold dear in the athletics programs at PC. I, again, I point out the way you've looked out for each other throughout these challenging times. And I recognize, of course, the gratitude that you have. Gratitude for your coaches, for your teammates, for all the good experiences you've had at PC. And also gratitude for these wonderful God-given abilities that you have. Abilities that have brought such pride and joy to your families, to you, to your teammates, and to Providence College. And the other thing I wanted to say this evening is that as a new president, one of the things that's been very important to me is the importance of making Providence College a diverse, equitable, and welcoming, loving community. And one of the things that I've been most grateful to all of you for is the passionate commitment that you've shown to making Providence College the kind of place we want it to be. You and the athletics program, our student athletes, our coaches, our staff in athletics, you've been models for the rest of us here on our campus. And that has made a huge difference for us. You've really gone out of your way under Bob's leadership to make Providence College the kind of place that we want it to be, a better place for everyone. And again, I'm so grateful for that and for this and all that you guys have done, you brought honor and dignity to yourselves and to Providence College. And so for those of you who are graduating, I wish you all the best in the world. And I hope you'll always consider Providence College your home and a place to come back to. And for those who'll be around with us in the fall, I promise you it's going to be a better year. God bless you all. And as Bob Driscoll says all the time, go Friars. Thank you. Thank you, Father Sicard, for those great words and wisdom, and thank you also for being a great teammate. You know, at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce another great teammate who's going to give the senior speech. Uh, she's currently the president of our Student Athletic Advisory Council. She's also the captain of the softball team, and as somebody who's been in college athletics for 46 years now, she's one of the best leaders I've ever been around. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you senior Julia Murphy. Julia? Good evening, my fellow Friars. Even though we can't be physically together, I'm so fortunate to be speaking to all of you tonight as we celebrate a truly one of a kind year. Despite the uncertainty of our circumstances, we came together as a Friar family in incredible fashion, working hard not only to get back on the field, in the court, on the track, and in the pool, but to keep each other safe and to keep moving forward. The resilience and dedication that you all have demonstrated is nothing short of amazing. It is difficult for me to articulate how much Providence College means to me, especially as my time here coming to a close. 
from the atmosphere of a sunset soccer game at the Chap to the electricity of the dunk to walking down to Glay Field on a warm afternoon, there are a million reasons that make Friartown special. All of these reasons, however, pale in comparison to the phenomenal individuals that make up the Friar family. You will be hard pressed to find an environment where everyone is rooting for you to succeed, not only as an athlete, but as a person. The support system that we have here is second to none from our athletic trainers, academic advisors, senior staff, coaches, strength coaches, facilities directors, GAs, and more. I hope that whether your time here is just beginning or coming to an end, you take the time to thank the people who are in your corner. I owe enough gratitude to give an entirely separate speech, but I'll keep it short. Thank you to my teammates for being the best people to share this crazy journey with and for being by my side through it all. To Jen and Shannon for believing in my potential and helping me grow into a leader that I can be proud of. To Coach Amy and Coach Rick, Sid and Caitlin for helping me perform on and off the fields. To Rock, Bob, Jill, Nick and Steve Knapp for their leadership and belief in the student voice. Thank you to my exec board, Rainier, Barbs, Remy, and Brenna for your tireless work and your shared goal of making Friartown a better place for everyone. And to all of you, thank you for entrusting me with this position and teaching me so much along the way. Like I said before, the strength of the Friar family is the reason that we were able to accomplish so much this year on and off the field. I am especially grateful for the leaders on SAC who have continued to show up week in and week out to ensure that our student athletes have everything that they need to thrive in such a strange time. As a SAC group, we work diligently to register 100% of our eligible student athletes to vote, donated over a thousand food items to a local pantry, donated 130 gifts to Providence families for the holiday season, made sure our mental health resources were accessible to everyone and organized the very first Friars United Week, which I hope will be a staple of our athletic community for years to come. While we faced a great deal of challenges along the way, we found strength and unity and chose to persevere. On the field, we accomplished some incredible feats as well. Women's ice hockey qualified for the NCAA championship for just the second time in program history. Maria Coffin qualified as an individual for the NCAA cross country championship and finished 99th. Abby Wheeler completed the 5,000 meters at NCAA indoor track and field championships and placed fifth to earn all American honors. Men's swimming claimed two Big East titles, making the first Big East championship since 1985 on the men's side. Justin Viotto won the 200-yard butterfly, and Kevin Hood won the 100-yard breaststroke. The Friars also claimed Big East Coaching Staff of the Year honors for volleyball and men's swim and dive. Providence College was selected to host two Big East Championship events, women's soccer and men's lacrosse, highlighting the fantastic facilities and ability of the department staff to produce a first-class event. And while athletic success is always worth recognizing, the people who we are off the field and the character we possess deserve to be celebrated. I want to leave you all with some thoughts that I hope you will think about after we disperse tonight. First, as student athletes, we are people of influence. We are all given an incredible platform by virtue of our position to lead and to impact others in a positive way. We all have something to offer the world and to offer others. It is a matter of understanding what you have and what you can contribute to your team, your community, and to the world. We can all be ambassadors of humanity if we choose to answer the call to help build a more loving, inclusive, and more equitable world. My challenge to all of you is to answer that call. And lastly, I hope that you believe in your ability to do really hard and difficult things. If this year has taught us anything, it is that you never know what's coming next. When challenges and obstacles come your way, I hope you meet them with unwavering belief in your own capacity for greatness. I'll leave you with a poem by Walter Wintle, one that legendary golfer Arnold Palmer would read before each match and something that I read before every time I take the field. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think that you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but think that you can't, it's almost certain you won't. If you think you'll lose, you've lost. For out in the world we find, success begins with a person's will. It's all in a state of mind. 
If you think you are outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later, the one who wins is the one who thinks they can. You are all capable of doing great things. Believe in yourself, trust in the work you've done, and let the people who have helped you along the way know how much they mean to you. Being a part of the Friar family has shaped me into the person I am today and has prepared me for my next chapter. It has been the honor of my lifetime to serve as your president. Much love, and as always, go Friars. At this time, we'd like to recognize those who advanced to NCAA postseason competition, as well as the two programs who were in Biggie's Coaching Staff of the Year Awards. <laughs> Punches him out at 148.23. Hunt trying to hang on. And the coach can't say Kevin Hunt for Providence College. Stano keeps the cross to Barnett. Goal! The Friars punch their ticket to the Hockey East Championship. I can't tell you how proud I am of our student athletes and our coaching staffs of the year of those two programs. Really, really special moment for all of us. You know, at this time, I'd like to thank and appreciate all of our student athletes for the amazing job that they've done in their community service. Uh, one of the things we talk about is being the most respected program in the nation and uh, our student athletes have done a great job in this area. Us, we, together, family, friars. This year, more than ever before, we were able to serve our community with a united front. From sending letters to children's hospitals and veterans' homes, to sending more than 350 gifts to families in Providence for the holidays, we served our community and made it our top priority. Although this year was challenging, this pandemic made it difficult. But this year, we touched more lives virtually than we ever could have in person. And for that, I am beyond grateful to be a friar and to serve this community. With the new structure of SAC this year, the Community Service and Engagement Subcommittee was able to hear from all teams reps with their creative new ideas, and we were able to implement them and do the best we could to serve our community. This allowed us to focus in and really come together as one friar family in serving the community from all teams aspects. This group allowed for us to collectively bring our initiatives to life. And because of this, our Friar family was stronger than ever, and we were able to serve the community in new and meaningful ways this year. My two favorite volunteer experiences this year were um, the personal letters that we wrote to veterans on Veterans Day and the virtual Valentines that we sent to both um, Mass General Hospital in Boston and St. Jude's Research Hospital. The veterans letters that we sent were personal letters of gratitude, um, expressing our thanks for these people that risk their lives for us every single day and maybe feeling a little bit lonely during this pandemic. The valentines that we sent to the children um, in the cancer wards at both hospitals also would not have been able to be done because most hospitals can't really accept um, handmade valentines. We really wanted to reach out to both of these populations to let them know that we're thanking them for their service and thinking of them during their hard times with their cancer battle or just loneliness, loneliness during the pandemic. So those experiences really stuck out to me and really honestly touched my heart during this year to help me feel involved in the surrounding communities. The COVID-19 pandemic has definitely made it harder to give back to the community of Providence and the surrounding areas due to social distancing and other restrictions. However, as a subcommittee, we were still able to give back to our community and even found new ways to do so. In the fall semester, student athletes wrote letters to veterans who might feel lonely during these unpredictable times. As teams, we competed to see who could collect the most food items during Thanksgiving, and around Christmas time, we adopted kids to send toys to. In addition to giving back to our community, we also created over 50 videos for the Friars Kids Club. As a committee, we found new and meaningful ways to stay involved in our community that were safe. 
This semester, we sent over 125 virtual Valentine's Day cards to the Boston Children's Hospital and St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. In addition to sending these virtual cards, we were also able to put together over 25 Easter baskets to send to cancer patients at the Hasbro Children's Hospital in Providence, Rhode Island. While we were not able to physically go out into the community and bond with the people of Providence, we did everything in our best efforts to find new meaningful ways to stay involved. Now more than ever, it is important to engage with those around us who need our help and support the most. At this time, we'll begin the awards portion of the ceremony, and we'll start today with the Mal Brown Award. Established in 1940 in memory of Malcolm H. Brown, this award is the oldest athletic accolade presented at the college. Donated and for many years presented by its founder, Edward P. Conte, class of 33, the Mal Brown Award is given to a graduating male senior whose athletic career of intercollegiate competition portrayed to a marked degree the qualities personified by Mal Brown, sportsmanship, courage, and honor. The nominees for the Mal Brown Award are Toby Bergdorf, lacrosse, Malcolm Duncan, men's soccer, and Greg Prince, men's ice hockey. This year's award winner for the Mal Brown Award is Toby Bergdorf. Lacrosse. Toby is the most well-respected and talented player on the Providence College lacrosse team due to his ability and leadership skills, but he is also our program's best teammate. Toby will wrap up his career at Providence College as one of the most decorated Friar lacrosse players of all time, while continuing our program's proud tradition of elite goaltenders. The next award is the Paul Conley Memorial Award. Established in 1977 in memory of Paul Connolly. Providence College's former Director of Alumni Development and Public Information. This award is presented annually to a senior female athlete who has distinguished herself among her peers and whose athletic career of intercollegiate competition has portrayed to a marked degree the qualities personified by sportsmanship, courage, and honor. The nominees for the Paul Connolly Memorial Award are Madison Babineau, Field Hockey, Hannah McNulty, Women's Soccer, Julia Murphy, softball. This year's winner of the Paul Conley Memorial Award is Julia Murphy, softball. Currently the president of our Student Athlete Advisory Council, Julia has consistently demonstrated her loyalty and honor to Providence College, athletics, and our softball program. As a walk-on, her work ethic on and off the field as a pitcher is unmatched, putting in countless hours in the bullpen, weight room, and on the field. Never a question, Julia's sportsmanship has been and always will be a leading example of what and who a friar should be. In a few words, Julia's character allows her to consistently be encouraging, positive, and ambitious in any role she is given. The next award is the Sine Quanon Award for Female and Male Student Athlete. That without whom, there is nothing. Established and presented annually by the Newport Area Alumni Club, the Sine Quanon Awards are two of the college's 10 major athletic awards. It is given yearly to both a male and a female graduating senior who has distinguished him or herself among his or her peers without receiving proper recognition. The award seeks to acknowledge those students who have not been adequately acknowledged during their careers. The nominees for the Sine Qua Non Award for Female Athletes are Sydney Kramer, Field Hockey Chloe Gonzalez, Women's Ice Hockey Olivia Orlando women's basketball, and Christina Rogers, women's soccer. This year's winner of the Sine Quanon Award for Female Student Athlete is Chloe Gonzalez, women's ice hockey. Chloe has been a solid and steady performer over her four years at PC. She has played in all situations and has been a key contributor to our team's success. She was named captain of our team during this difficult year. Over the year, her leadership qualities relished and she helped guide the women's hockey team to the hockey's final and NCAA tournament for the first time in 15 years. 
the player that is relied on to play solid defense most times isn't recognized by their peers as a top performer. Many people look for the flashy player that has lots of points production. In Chloe's case, her point production won't wow you, but she was one of the best shutdown defensemen in our league and on our team. She was able to be so successful against other teams' top players because she has an incredible work ethic and a heart of a lion. And now for the male Sine Qua Non Award. The nominees for the Sine Qua Non Award for male athletes are Malcolm Duncan, men's soccer. Andrew Fonts, men's basketball. Evan McGreen, lacrosse. And Ben Mirages, men's hockey. This year's winner of the Sine Qua Non Award for a male student athlete is Malcolm Duncan, men's soccer. Malcolm has been a solid contributor to the men's soccer team since his arrival in 2017, playing and starting in over 60 games during that time. Although ever present on the team sheet, Malcolm is not one who shows up on the score sheet too often, which at times means he is overlooked for postseason awards and recognition. Solid, tough, and a true competitor, we know his true value to the team, and this past season he was named a team captain. Having completed his degree in December, majoring in finance, he is currently enrolled in the MBA program and plans to return in the fall to fulfill his last season of eligibility. The next award is the Jane Thompson Award. The Humanitarian Award. The Jane Thompson Award is in memory of Jane Thompson, class of 99. This award is presented to the male or female senior student athlete who, through the course of their career at PC, sets themselves apart from their fellow student athletes in the areas of public and community service and outreach to others. An individual who shows selflessness and caring for those around them and looks to what they can do to help others without the need to be recognized. An individual who personifies all that is good about being a student athlete at Providence College and exhibits selflessness, dedication, loyalty, courage, and perseverance under the most extreme personal circumstances. The nominees for the Jane Thompson Award are Davis Buns, Men's Hockey Sarah Deneliak, Volleyball and Olivia Ward, Field Hockey This year's winner of the Jane Thompson Award is Davis Buns, Men's Hockey Davis is an incredible representation of Providence College and Providence Athletics on and off the ice. Davis leads with his example and prides himself on being a good man and a great teammate. An active member of the Fond Blanc Foundation, Davis has taken several mission trips to the Fond Blanc Orphanage in Haiti to assist in the rebuilding efforts after a 2010 earthquake, as well as serving as a role model for the children at the orphanage. In addition to his work with the Font Blanc Foundation, Davis is an active member of the Providence College Student Athlete Advisory Council. Davis Buns embodies all that is great about Providence College and Friar Athletics. The next award is in honor of Reverend Robert A. Morris, class of 1946. The college's mission statement speaks of the power of grace to enlighten minds, open hearts, and transform lives. You know, Father Morris was an amazing man here in Friartown. It was a big reason I ended up in Friartown 20 years ago. You know, he was one of the Dominicans during my interviews and he sat at the end of the table and he didn't say a word. And when I left, I was walking down the back staircase and I ran into Father Morris and he came up to me and said, young man, you did a good job. And I said, thank you, Father. He said, you know, we'll see you in Friartown again. And I said, why? Why do you say that, Father? He said, because God brings those to Friartown when it's their time. And he said, it's your time. time. And I went back home and my wife asked me, how did the uh, interview go? And I said, I don't know, but I met this real cool Dominican priest. And he said I was going to Friartown because he knows God personally. The next day the phone rang and um, I've been here 20 years. So I owe a lot to Father Morris and this is truly an amazing award. This award is presented annually to a student athlete who has had a profound impact on Providence College during their career. The recipient of the seventh annual Reverend Robert A. Morris Memorial Award is Julia Murphy, softball. Julia has appeared in 34 games for the Friars, pitching a cumulative 58 in the third innings. She has recorded a 4.20 ERA over her career with 24 strikeouts. Julia is currently serving as president of the Student Athlete Advisory Council and is the Diversity Committee Chair for the Board of Programmers. 
She spearheaded the Friars United Week initiative, which promoted allyship, anti-racism, LGBTQ plus inclusivity, and anti-xenophobia to help strengthen the ties that bind our Friar family. Julia also serves as a student representative on the Athletic Subcommittee for Providence College's COVID-19 Continuity Task Force, providing insight and perspective on the student-athlete experience while ensuring a safe return to campus and competition. Her achievements extend into the classroom, as Julia has been named to the Big East All-Academic Team for the 2018, 2019, and 2020 seasons. The next awards are the Male and Female Athletes of the Year for an individual and team sport. This year's Female Athlete of the Year for an individual sport is... Abby Wheeler, track. Abby has been a major contributor to the success of the track and cross country program since our freshman year. Having lived in the shadow of past Providence College Athletes of the Year, Katrina Roca, Millie Palladino and Bria Lardo, Abby came into her own over the last two years. A two-time Big East champion and athlete of the meet at conference indoor championships just before the onset of COVID, was followed 12 months later with a fifth place finish at the NCAA championships in the 5,000 meters. Both those years, she was NCAA Northeast Region Athlete of the Year. Already a two-time All-American, she will look to add to that number at the NCAA Outdoor Championships in June. Abby has been a great team leader and a very positive example to all our teammates. Our Providence College Individual Athlete of the Year, Abby Wheeler. And now, for this year's Female Athlete of the Year for a team sport, the nominees are... Sandra Abstreiter, Women's Ice Hockey. Madison Babineau, Field Hockey. Allison Barber, Volleyball. This year's winner is... Sandra Abstreiter, Women's Ice Hockey. Sandy was a rock for us all year. She was so consistent and played played big in big moments. Um, she's a type of player that comes every day, works hard, and improves her game day in and day out. She's always out there early. She's the last one off, and every time you're watching her, she's, she's doing something to improve her game, to make us better and make herself better. And now, for this year's Male Athlete of the Year for an individual sport, the nominees are... Marcelo Rocha, Cross Country. Justin Viotto, Swimming. This year's winner is... Justin Viotto, Swimming. Excited to present uh, Justin Viotto after an outstanding year, certainly a unique year, put together just a, a, an incredible string of meets here this spring. Uh, leading up to a championship and uh, had one of the best championships of any friar ever. Culminating in one of the most exciting races of the meet is 200 fly win on the last day. Come from behind, uh, very typical of his uh, race style and uh, very exciting last 50, reaching out and touching and winning by uh, one one hundredth of a second. He's our leading scorer for the third year in a row and just a uh, a super re representative of all that can be accomplished here in Friar Town, both uh, in the water and in the classroom. So it's my privilege and, and pleasure to uh, introduce this year's a Male Athlete of the Year for individual sports, Justin Beato. And now for this year's Male Athlete of the Year for a team sport, the nominees are... Toby Bergdorf, lacrosse. Tice Thompson, men's hockey. Nate Watson, men's basketball. This year's winner is... Nate Watson, men's basketball. Congratulations, Nate. A well-deserved honor. Nate Watson has one of the most infectious personalities that I've ever been around. He's genuine, he's funny, he's very smart, and someone who epitomizes what it is to be a friar. His commitment to come back for a fifth year and work at his master's degree is an indication of his attitude toward achieving academic excellence. Congratulations, Nate. We as a basketball program are really, really proud of you. I love you and go Friars. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the award portion of our presentation this evening. And now we go into the senior tribute video, which is really one of my most favorite parts of tonight's events. But before I let you go, I just want to once again thank and appreciate all of you for another amazing year. 
I promise you this is the last time we will do a virtual video. I'll have my tuxedo on. We'll be in person. We'll be hugging each other. And just want you to know how much I admire and respect you and how much I love you. And uh, stay safe. And remember, as always, go Friars. Come on. Yeah. I can go from like left to right in a certain way. No, no, that's good. Yeah. Sports, um, athletics. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so bad at going out. <laughs> so you spell yeah. it. Um, I can go first if you want. I'm so bad. No, I was making it. Remember oh. someone was like, "Cut you!" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this probably isn't going to be able to be put in this, but. I would like to think. First, my parents, because they really pushed me to get to uh, such a high level of volleyball and I would not be anywhere without their support. My coaches definitely for helping me grow on and off the field. And I'd also like to thank my professors because we are student athletes, so they've helped us outside the field hockey field and in the classroom as well. Steve Nabs, Bob Driscoll, and Coach White is another big one. Our coaches, our teammates, um, Anderson, our coach, John, Margaret, Coach White. And the behind the scenes people, you know, Jen Rye, she does so much for our program. So much. Shout, Shout out to Jen Rye. Rye. <laughs> yeah, Jen Rye, you rock. Um, Jenny, our Dobo, she's incredible too. Jesse, all of the, the staff. Sports med staff, I've definitely had my fair share of going into sports med. Kristen, always there for us, especially in and out with little injuries and things. Thanks specifically Coach Rick. Um, he's someone that we always can go to. We're having trouble on the field or, or outside of lacrosse. He's been somebody that we've been able to talk to and he's been a really great influence on us. I'd like to thank the entire athletic department for everything that they did for us behind the scenes. We appreciate it so much. I just want to thank uh, everyone, all the support, all family back home, friends. Uh, let's go Friars. I think my favorite memory would have to just collectively be all the bus rides when we would travel. We jammed out. Uh, we sang Shallow like at least a hundred times. Everybody! I'm on the deep end! <laughs> My heart is on the <laughs> One of my favorite on the field memories was definitely our sophomore year. Um, we played Georgetown and we found out that we had made the Big East tournament for the first time in a while. It was pouring rain. The game was absolutely brutal. That just putting on the, the uniform and being on that field for the first time as a friar. We're back in the shallow now. Um, set more than one alarm. Go to every event. There's so much going on in Friartown. Just take advantage of how small PC is. Leaving everything you have on the field, on the court, on the track, in the pool. Just immerse yourself in all the spirit that's at this school. Just enjoy the journey and yeah, go Friars. but like a memorable time was on a trip to Philadelphia and a whole lot of us got stuck in an elevator before a game. That was definitely very traumatic. I think the main game was really fun. It was like our first away trip last year. It was very like back and forth game. There was lots of goals. We won in overtime. And then for me, my whole family got to come. So that was fun to have them on the sidelines supporting us. I think um, for us three, all of our, our freshman year was very memorable because we only had about a four away games, so, and we had like a new turf, and so it was a great atmosphere. My advice would be to remember that we are like part of a team that's much bigger than ourselves, and we're playing for our alumni and our coaches and family back home and everything. Every practice, every game, just looking around, taking a deep breath and taking it all in because you're super lucky to be here and you're super lucky to wear the jersey that says Providence on it. And making those connections with your teammates because they're basically like our sisters for life. So just getting to know everyone and just making those lifelong friendships. The Boston College Tournament my freshman year because I was so nervous. And we beat BC for the first time in 19 years and Oh, Coach Margo cried. <laughs> and I was like, what? It was like my second game ever playing, and I was, it was a roller coaster. My favorite memory would probably be a recent one, would be our very first game back this spring. Um, 
I think for everyone, we all waited a really long time um, with COVID and everything, and it was a great team win. And then also that was my first game back after a year and a half of injury, and that was just such an exciting time. My advice, looking back to everyone who is still going to be in Firetown for a couple more years, um, would really be to be a good teammate. I think looking back, like, you don't, in a couple years, you're not really going to remember someone, how many kills or goals or shots someone had in a certain game, but you're going to remember how you feel around that person. I think my favorite memory was last year, our trip from um, Puerto Rico to Villanova and then back home. I think it was probably the most fun our team has had. Our Monday morning team lifts. We've had uh, quite a few funny memories. With just listen to your teammates, listen to your coaches, learn from everyone that you can um, and take advantage of everyone that's around you that's looking to help you succeed. Uh, just go ahead and listen to your coaches and your teachers. They, they know a lot more than you want to admit they know. just kind of pushing through those hard workouts and practices with everyone else who does distance. Um, it definitely made it a lot easier in the long run and made me kind of appreciate that camaraderie. Our Fairfield meet our junior year. Uh, it was a really exciting meet. It was really close the entire time and the energy was really high. I'm pretty sure it came down to the last event, the last relay. The senior meet last year from 2020 was definitely one of my favorite meets. Um, we were really close. We were neck and neck with Maine and in the past we've been really close to them and we were, it came down to the last relay and I remember our coach basically readjusting all the relays so we would try to win. They used last year just because I feel like um, as a team we were all super close, like we went through a lot. The past year with like we had an earthquake in Puerto Rico and everyone was swimming super well and it was super fun because we were in New York and like everyone's parents were there. So much advice I could give, but I'm just going to try to keep it short and sweet. But um, I think just like work hard and I think that a smile goes a long way. Just remember to enjoy the little things and always have fun with it. Live in the moment. Uh, one thing that John always says that stuck with me is to adapt. Just really make the most of your time here. Our fans over the years have been incredible. I know it was different this year, but I just think that, you know, on the court and off the court, there are so many people that contributed to our program. So thank you all so much. One of my favorite memories definitely was this year, our Creighton game. We were down three players. We only had seven players. Um, in o Omaha, Nebraska, which is one of the toughest places to play on the road. Um, and we ended up winning. And we got the win for the people who are in quarantine. But so. definitely all the times off the court that we were all together just sitting down watching games or even going out and get something to eat. It was just like the little things like that and just how much we appreciate each other's presence and you know how good it is to be a group and be together. Like that's the stuff that sticks with you. But cherish every moment. It goes by really fast. Don't just stay within your team. Like expand out because we're all a family. Finding your balance of, you know, maintaining that social life, have a movie night with your friends, go grab dinner on fair, um, but also put in the work and do your best, you know, in your sport and throughout everything you do in college. So find your balance for sure. Just know what type of person you are and never let anybody try to uh, stay you otherwise. You are who you are and that's all that matters. Looking back, I think our, my favorite memory is when the team made a trip down to Florida for spring break. Uh, we all raced pretty well and we grew as a team. Um, we had a meet back down in uh, um, Raleigh, North Carolina, um, but I ended up throwing out my shoulder my sophomore year. Um, so I had a really long recovery process. Um, and then last year was cut short due to COVID. So I haven't been able to throw in two years, um, but just coming back, going through the whole rehab process, um, but, you know, believe in myself the whole time and not giving up on it. Um, some good advice would be just that when you come in your freshman year, um, you know, do as much as you can, meet as many people as you can. Just cherish your time and try to remember the good memories you have with the friends.
So I just think just the little things that we experience day to day with each other. Every situation, you know, when we're together has been, you know, a great, great blessing. And it's been a tremendous amount of fun to be together. If I had one piece of advice, it would just be to enjoy every moment. Just lean on your teammates, uh, lean on other people in the PC community. Stick with the process. It works and it gives you uh, valuable life lessons. It's important to sort of bear down and know that you can get through whatever you're going through. You know, definitely be a sponge, absorb any and all information or, you know, lessons learned. I would say my favorite memory here was the first day I stepped foot on this campus. I immediately felt at home. I felt all the energy from the Friars, the fans, and I immediately just felt like it was a family here. Just doing um, workouts on the track and finishing and having the weather really, really beautiful. And then everybody goes and takes an ice bath and just kind of hangs out. Um, so it's really nice just to be with your team, especially after finishing a really hard workout. It's me, my freshman year, like when we won Big East Cross, like that was really special to me. And I feel like as a freshman, just everything's so fun and so new. So mm -hmm. And don't expect yourself to be the best of the best, but just kind of enjoy the time that you have with your teammates. It's hard to enjoy the hard workouts, hard runs, anything like that. But um, I think it's important to realize that that's only going to make you better and that at some point you're going to miss that. My favorite memory was definitely beating Butler in PKs. Butler actually scored first, but I feel like throughout the whole game, we like we all knew like we could win it, and we kind of like were able to like change it around. Mm -hmm. so it was a super exciting moment, and everyone just jumping on each other and hugging each other, and all the emotions. It was just so exciting. Let's take advantage of the innovation lab. I just like used the cryo chamber this past year, and I wish I used like utilized it. Um, all the time it was here. Don't take any day for granted because time goes so quick. Like enjoy the opportunity. To enjoy every second. Yeah, being a friar was, you know, one of the biggest growth experiences I've had. I'm sure every single other senior graduating with me would agree that it's been a blessing. It was pretty overwhelming at first, but I can say looking back that I really enjoyed and I really respect um, the people around me and how they made me more comfortable and confident here. Memories off and on the ice will always be in my head. Um, the one I can think of is when we went to Bemidji as simple as like going to, <laughs> to our rooms and then we all had a porch and we would say Bimiji forever. Playing here at PC meant everything to me. Um, it was the best four years of my of my life and hockey career and there's nowhere else I would have wanted to play. Most importantly, I was able to create connections that I know will last a lifetime and especially with my teammates here and Transferring from a bigger school to a smaller school, I think that these friendships that I made here and on this team are definitely going to last me a lifetime. My time at PC, um, I enjoyed every second of it from um, my freshman year. We were always friends with, with the seniors and everyone, so even though they were three to four years older, they always um, took us right in. And, and now being a senior, I think we're doing a good job of doing that as well for our freshmen this year. I also like to give a shout out to my parents. Um, I know I don't say thank you enough. Um, my dad's had to work two jobs to support me. So um, I just want to say thank you so much. And I do appreciate it, even if I don't show it. I wanted to thank my parents, my friends, my coaches for giving me the opportunity to play at Friar Dunn. Over the last four years, I've made a lot of great memories and met a lot of great people. But one thing I definitely won't forget is going to the Frozen Four my sophomore year. Just being in the locker room with the guys, making those memories. Um, they're unbelievable people. I've met some great people here. Going to Ireland, one of the greatest experiences of my life. I thought that was just one of a kind, you know, once in a lifetime. Just to go around and see all the history and then be in that environment. But I think what I'll remember the most is definitely the people I met. The experience here has been second to none. 
throughout the lessons I've learned and the people I've met. You know, I can't really thank everybody enough. It was just traveling with the team and uh, like these guys kind of become your family after a while. Our win at Penn State, down to nothing. We had our backs up against the wall basically and we just didn't stop and to win that we can come back towards the end of the game. That was just, that was a good one. Uh, coach, those 630 Coach White lifts. A little stuff. I only played one season, but on the field, I'd say for maybe selfish reasons that the uh, the most fun I had in the field was probably the St. John's semifinal game. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great memories off the field too. I just remember Malcolm uh, got half of a haircut and <laughs> uh, <laughs> had to almost had to go to the game with half of his head shaved off. Was was hilarious. That was definitely one of them. One of the Malcolm <laughs> haircut. Yeah, I just say you got to work hard in your in your time here. Definitely like, don't take it for granted and. Just make the most of every, every second. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. Stay safe. Good luck on your finals. We'll see you again next year. And as always, go Friars.